Oh, somebody help me praise Jesus. Somebody help me praise Jesus. Somebody just lift your hands up and help me praise Jesus. Just lift your hands up and help me praise him. I don't know what you come to do, but I've come to praise him. You just ain't, you ain't even wiggling your lips. How can you praise him if you don't wiggle your lips? How can you praise him if you don't tell him how good he is? Because that's what praise is. Begin to praise him. Tell him how good he is. And Lord, we thank you. 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 Somebody just lift your hands and praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. Praise God who is the Lamb of light. We'll be calling up from every nation on the way to a celebration. What a time. Oh, what a time. A mighty good time. And there'll be no separation They'll be coming from the north and the south On the way to the Father's house We'll be coming from the east and the west On the way to the land of rest What a time, oh what a time A mighty good time Come from strength to win all of God's children get there We're gonna have a good time when all of God's children get there, we're going to have a good time. When all of God's children get there, we're going to have a good time. What a time, oh what a time, a mighty good time. We're going to walk the streets of gold in the homeland of the soul. We're going to view the host of white praise God who is a We'll be coming up from every nation on a way to a celebration. Oh, what a time! Oh, what a time! Oh, what a, time. Oh, a mighty good time! I said, Saints, when all the God's children get there, we're gonna have a good time. I said, when all the God's children get there, we're gonna have a good time. When all the God's children get there. We're gonna have a good time. What a time. Oh, what a time. A mighty good time. Oh, somebody give Jesus a hand clap. I'm gonna have a good time. There's one thing about it, about God. He didn't say, I'm gonna be stingy, you're gonna wait until you have to get there before you can have. You ought to stop by the church sometime. Yes. You ought to stop by the church sometime. Something may be said to help you on your way If you stop by the church sometime You ought to stop by the church sometime You ought to stop by the church sometime Something may be said to help you on your way If you stop by the church sometime Now when you see the deacon come out and sing a song Give testimony about what the Lord has done Well, the Holy Ghost is moving to every pain and care If left behind, you got a made of mind You can leave your burdens there You can listen to the songs that they sing Listen to the songs that they sing The words of the song will help you to carry on If you stop by the church sometime You ought to stop by the church sometime you ought to stop by the church sometime. Something may be said to help you on your way if you stop by the church sometime. Now when you see the preacher come out and take a stand, read the Holy Scripture, y'all try to take it in. Cause in that Holy Bible, it's got everything you need. You can find a scripture, a very scripture, and take a little time to read. You can listen to the prayers that they pray. Oh, just listen to the prayers that they pray. And while you're there in prayer, Holy Ghost will meet you there. If you stop by the church sometime, you ought to stop by the 
church sometime. You ought to stop by the church sometime. Something may be said to help you on your way if you stop by the church sometime. If you only stop by the church, if you need a friend, stop by the church. If you have been talked about, stop by the church. Stop by the church. Stop by the church. If you need a healing, stop by the church. If you need salvation, stop by the church. If you need deliverance, stop by the church. Stop by the church. Stop by the church. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Stop by the church. Stop by the church. Feel like shouting. Stop by the church. Feel like dancing. Stop by the church. 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 Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Ah, it's can't be the time. Feel like dancing. Feel like running. You're gonna stand at home and not shout it. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Stop by the church. Stop by the church. Feels like shouting. Stop by the church. Feels like dancing. Stop by the church. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Stop by the church. Stop by the church. Feels like my shoes. Stop by the church. Oh, I'm here to tell you, you're out of church that'll uh, tell you it's okay to shout. You're out of church that'll tell you it's okay to dance. You're out of church that'll tell you if you ain't shout, you're supposed to be shouting. You're out of church that says if you ain't dancing, you're supposed to be dancing because it's all right in the house of God in the presence to give God the glory and God the honor. Won't somebody give Jesus a hand clap? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Sister Connie from Tampa will come. Hallelujah. Or, uh, uh, you're from Tampa, I believe. the 
sails are torn and I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas the anchor holds in spite of If you got your anchor in sand, it's not going to hold. You got to have your anchor on the rock. When you get connected to the rock, nothing moves the rock. If my brothers from Brazil would come and bless us, they honored us last night. And hallelujah, it's such a great blessing. Hallelujah. I'm so glad what God is doing. Oh, you can do better than that. This is camp meeting time. I said, this is camp meeting time. I said, this is camp meeting time. I said, this is camp meeting time. I want you to just stand up to your feet, and I just want you to get camp meeting happy. You ain't getting there yet. You know what it takes.
The Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He said, if you don't have joy, he said, you can leap for it. When you don't feel like you can get out of the mud, you pull yourself up anyhow. When you don't feel like you can get out of the problem, you pull yourself up. Give Brother Les a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Just shortly before coming to the United States, the Lord opened the doors uh, to schools where these young men go in and minister the gospel playing. They close the entire school down and require that everybody be in these uh, rallies that they teach them concerning the uh, problems and errors of uh, using drugs and drinking. And uh, though they were, some of them, uh, pushers of drugs, Nano came from the street where he sold and lived. And the other boy that plays the drums uh, was... Viciado, uh, I was going to say. Um, uh, how do they call them when they're hooked on drugs? I guess that's sort of a word. Huh? Drug addict. And uh, he was eight and nine years old on the streets uh, stealing. Could get into any house, any car, anything because he had that skills at nine years old when his father kicked him out of the house and said, you're never supposed to come back. Just shortly after that, he learned while he was already starting to go to church that Jesus loved him, and he had given his heart to the Lord. He learned that his father, his father who was a, a drunkard, had killed his brother, and shortly after that had stabbed another and was in the hospital. He would hung him when he was just uh, barely big enough to hardly walk, and ruined his voice. He wasn't able to speak for months. God gave him all of this back. And he has a God-given talent of singing the praises of the Lord. I don't know exactly what song they, uh, they, they sell their instruments and things so they can get enough to pay their, uh, by, uh, their plane fare. And they've come for six months to study and to ask God to give them a special ministry so that they can reach the Portuguese-speaking world. And there are about three, uh, uh, 350 to 400 million who speak Portuguese. So it's a big field, Brazil alone, with 150 million. Uh, God bless you, boys. Uh, I hope that they can, you know, it, it's sort of hard. All of these instruments are new to them, and uh, they're new to you. They... Oh. They sing in English but don't understand it. <laughs> and they speak in English and I don't understand them. Hello. Hi. É, a gente está super feliz em estar mais uma vez na presença de Deus. We're uh, super happy to be here and uh, once again visit the States. E também queremos tocar uma música do Brasil para vocês hoje. We want to play um, Brazilian music for you today. Espero que vocês possam gostar. And I hope that you'll be able to understand Portuguese music. Oh, 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 oh,
other Alex Ada bayar tu. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for young men that will give their heart to Jesus. They could be in some nightclub tonight. They could be on some street corner tonight. But they chose to be in the house of God. And hallelujah, they're from Brazil to be in, in this camp meeting. And I just thank God they come all this way to be a blessing. We didn't even know they was going to get here until they got here. But, you know, I'm so glad they're here. They have some CDs or cassettes at the back that will just be a blessing. Even if you don't like it, you buy it anyhow. Be a blessing to them, and God will bless you because I believe if you buy it, you'll like it. Hallelujah. I believe if you buy it, you'll like it. I, hallelujah. Brother Doyle, come up here, sir. I call him sir because he done such a great job this morning. Even before this morning, he done a great job. Why don't you greet the folks and have your older brother to come? All right. Thank you, Brother uh, Dobbs. How many know that Jesus is still alive? How many know that God gives you power to overcome all the powers of the enemy? You remember when Paul was on his way to Rome, a prisoner, and all of a sudden, 
a storm came up. For 14 days, they were at sea. And there was no way that they're going to make it. They threw all the food, all the uh, belongings, everything over the shore, or over the, the board, and uh, into the sea. And finally, Paul said, if we'd have stayed in Crete, we wouldn't have this problem. But because you didn't listen to me, we, we're in this mess. There's a lot of folks in a mess today because they didn't listen to the man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a lot of folks today that are bound and they're sick because they didn't do what they knew was best to do. Instead of having a, a good hearty meal, they'll go to Hardy's or go to some place like that and get a bunch of junk food and stick it in their body. And when they get sick, they wonder why they got sick. But I'm here to tell you, old Paul said, because you didn't obey, he said, now we're in this mess. And so all of a sudden, the storm came to be so bad that the ship wrecked. And Paul stood up and said, God just appeared to me and said there's not a one of you that's going to perish not a hair on your head's going to perish because the Lord stood by my side this night and said if you stand by me I'm going to see you through when you stand by your church and stand by your pastor and stand by the work of God God's going to see you through well there's some got ashore on broken pieces of the ship some got ashore by swimming and when they got there the, the, the people in Melita found that, that they were wonderful people though they were prisoners and they up and this time they thought that Paul was a, a devil because that he was on this ship going to Rome as a prisoner but God said you got to go to Rome and you got to tell the leaders in Rome that I am still God well let me tell you when they got on Melita it was raining they were cold and they were wet and they began to build a fire when they began to build that fire oh Paul put some sticks in the wood in the fire and a Bible said a viper a poison a snake fastened itself upon him well you know what there's a lot of folks got a poison uh, fastened to you today there's a viper a hold of you today and unless that you get rid of it it's going to kill you they thought that old Paul was a devil but when he shook that snake off when he shook him off and he did not even get sick he kept right on ministering kept right on blessing the people they then thought he was a god I'm here to tell you if you got a problem that the devil's fastened himself upon you all you got to do is to shake him off shake off the devil shake off doubt shake off fear shake off unbelief shake off sickness shake off pain I want you to jump up and shake off the problem that's been holding you down come on shake him off shake him off now wait here give me some volume please a lot of you folks you couldn't even shake off a flea You've just sort of did this, you know, like a, a, a sissy man, you know. But if you're a real man or you're a real woman, I want you to shake off anything that's held you down, anything that's bound you. Now I want you to step on him. Come on, begin to praise God. Begin to rejoice in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shake it off. Shake it off. Everybody shout, shake it off. Come on, shout, shake it off. Woo! Go ahead. Now, now wait a minute. I want some of you that really believe that you shook off pain, you shook off fear, you shook off poverty, you shook off sickness. I want you to run to somebody and say, let's shake it off together. Come on, go over and grab a hold of somebody and begin to shake it off. Walk on that devil. Tell the devil he don't have any power. Come on, come on. Come on, shake it off. Now, wait a minute. Thank you. Wait a minute. Some of you folks don't believe what you're doing. You say, oh, that's all foolishness. Jesus said it takes the foolish things to confound the wise. So I want you to really shake off that fear, that doubt, that unbelief. Come on, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Now, if you believe that you shook it off, I want you to begin to leap for praise, leap for joy. Come on, leap for joy. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Everybody. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to do one more thing. I didn't get up here to do this. But God told me 
Thank you, my brother. Finally found a sound man. Let me say this. There's a lot of folks today that if you would just put a little effort and a little faith to your prayer and to your praise, you'd find that God would do something great in your life. I'm going to ask every one of you in this room to go to somebody and you tell them, I have shook it off and I've got victory right now. And if you need victory help, let me help you shake him off. Come on, go to somebody. Go to four or five people. Say, I got victory. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, everybody shout yes. Yes, yes. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. We haven't danced together in a long time. Yes, it's mine, mine, mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Woo, go ahead. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Listen, I want you to go home with something tonight that you didn't have when you came here. How many of you folks want God to do something in your life tonight? I want you to go to 10 people and say nothing that the devil has will hold me down. I claim a miracle in my life tonight. Come on, go to 10 people and tell them, I claim a miracle in my life tonight. I got it. 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 I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Something about that Holy Ghost, I don't understand, but I got it. 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 I got joy. 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 Joy, joy. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. 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 Joy is mine. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody to just holler. Hallelujah. We're at the football game with Jesus' crowd and the devil's crowd. And Jesus just made a touchdown. And I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout it again, hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh -huh. Turn around and say, you may think I'm crazy, but I'm having a good time. 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 Good time is mine. Oh, good time is mine. Time, 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 time. Oh, come on, lift your hand and shout hallelujah one more time.
Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. You can sit down before some of you get fanatical. Let me say something. You, I know you've had a great time in this convention. I've only been here since yesterday, and I have to leave in the morning to be back to my church on Saturday morning. We have a prayer meeting. We'll have over 120. That'll be there in prayer at 7 o'clock. That's why the Spirit of God moves when people begin to pray something happens when people put god first something happens when people recognize that your sleep or your food or your friendship or your fellowship don't mean as much as being in tune with god and you get on your knees and begin to bombard heaven i want you to know the oh, devil yeah. gets nervous and god begins to move somebody shout hallelujah we've had some great services already even since i've been here and i know you had greater before i came perhaps but tomorrow night is going to be a night you will never forget as long as you live. When my brother Ralph begins to minister as the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon him, this man was dead in the Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. And my daddy said, devil, you can't have him. And they, and they, they, they hit him, run, run over him, knocked him 60 feet through the air. He was pronounced dead. But the same God that gave him first life came in and touched him and gave him a new life. And the old devil tried to kill him a few years ago while he was preaching in his pulpit. And they called me in Los Angeles and said, your brother has had a major heart attack and he's going to die. I looked up to God and I said, God, he's preaching your gospel and he can't die. He had a heart attack in the pulpit. They took him from the pulpit even to the, uh, to the hospital. But I want you to know the doctor, the doctor that said you don't have a dog's chance to live. Your arteries are all blocked and you'll never, you'll never get out of this hospital. I went there and stood by that uh, emergency room and I began to bombard heaven as we began to pray across this nation and I want you to know that Dr. Karakin who said you didn't have a chance to live not even five days 14 days later rolled him out of the hospital and somebody said Hoy, what are you doing doctor he said I'm rolling out a miracle I have nothing to do with it it was God's miracle power when he begins to minister to you I've seen God perform miracles he's got hundreds of, uh, uh, of cancer walking canes and hundreds of, of all kind of cripple material lined up around his altar in Detroit, Michigan and I'm here to tell you tomorrow night you're going to see the lame walk, the deaf is going to hear and the dumb is going to talk if you get them in here. I know what God has done. He and I travel together all over this nation and preaching the gospel in gospel tents and auditorium and God moved by a miraculous way. I'm just sorry I'll not be able to be here but you can be here. How many folks want a miracle let me see your hand how many want God to do something new in your life let me see brother Ralph come and tell the folks about it brother Don I was praying today God's will that everyone here is healed that's God's will God gets no glory when you can't walk when you can't talk when you can't exercise when you can't give God praise by raising your hands it's God's will for every person. I don't care what you think or what's been told to you. It's God's will for you to be healed. But I'm going to give you five things that stops God from moving in your life. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you have, how much tongues you have. If these five things are in your life, you will never find the power of the miracle of God to bring deliverance to you. When we get through tomorrow night, I don't care how long you've been sick. It doesn't matter how bad that you are. It doesn't matter what the devil has told you or the doctor has told you or anybody else has told you. We've 
you've got a God that specializes in exactly what you have need of. It doesn't matter if you're down, if you're out, if you're discouraged. It doesn't matter if you're so low, you have to look up to see bottom. I'm here to tell you the power of the Holy Ghost can change your life. The power of the Holy Ghost can set you free. God can lift you from the very bottom. Put his mighty hand upon you and you'll get walking out of here like a blind man in a pocket patch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time you recognize this is God's hour for me. Amen. Just before that we sing, turn me up please. Just before that we sing, the first Sunday in March, the first Sunday in March, we have a Heart Brothers convention in my church in Los Angeles. Why don't you plan to take a vacation and come out to a, not a rainy state, but a sunny state, earthquake state. You didn't have to say that, but anyhow, we have a time. All of my brothers will be there. Ministers from all over the nation will be there, and I hope you make it. And we'll do this number especially for you. Look away to heaven. But Brother Noah, we got to do this special for all those wonderful ladies. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. They have cooked. Listen, you know what? The group from Brazil was pretty hungry when they got here. They ran out of money. And one of the boys said, that's Brother Leslie, he don't feed very good. <laughs> but when they walked out there oh. and they saw that cafeteria style food, their eyes bugged out like bullfrogs eyes. I mean, they ate and they ate and they ate. And you ladies don't know. Brother Steve, I want you to know. I know. Man, you know, that is absolutely, there's no place and no cafeteria in the world that can beat that. I mean, that's the best. I think you ought to give Brother Steve Dobbs a great big God bless you. Come on. Come on, do it real good. Do it real good. And Brother Jimmy Dobbs. Come on, give him both a great big. I just, come here, Brother Steve. I just want to say this. There is no place, no church in the world that's got a combination like this. That's right. And the devil don't like it. But I got news for him. The devil doesn't have anything to do with it. This is God's work. God raised this man up and raised this man up here. And they're the two greatest pastors I've known any place in the world. And let's get Brother Jimmy and Brother Steve Dobbs another great big God. Oh, really? Come on, everybody. And for all of these wonderful people and for all the ministers from out of town it. and from the, all those ladies over there, look away to heaven. Put a cat to heaven, gonna sing and shout. There ain't nobody there to turn me out. Put a cat to heaven, gonna put on my shoes, gonna walk all around and spread the good news. Now look away, now look away to hell. I went to him before his time. Now look away. Now look away to heaven. Now look away. Now look away to heaven. Now look away. Now look away to heaven. Now look away. 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 Holy done. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Getting ready. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Getting ready. I'm getting ready before the gates of pearl. Well, keep in my records wide. Watch out for their night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Oh, trusting in the riches of his saved and grace. In his earthly trial, I have love and trace. Sure, they have been here by show. Watching, I'm getting ready to leave this world. To prepare a match of cheap and said I'll go. If it were not true, I would have told you so. Just a little while to linger here below. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Getting ready to leave this 
It's been a long time since you and I have been together. And uh, Brother Maurice is usually with us. But we'd like to play for you tonight something special just for Brother Dobbs and his father and all of you wonderful people. We want to play 20 fingers on one guitar. Now, this is a strange guitar to me, and I don't, don't know how to play anyhow. I just thought to make a lot of noise. But, uh, uh, but Brother Ralph and I will try to show you what we uh, we've been copied all over the world and uh, nobody can do it like us because they play better than we do <laughs> what is it? we're gonna play for you Jesus hold my hand now when we used to get this close together thank you for a good sound that's right when we used to get this close together, we were fighting. We fought all the time when we were at home. You think of it, six boys and two girls, and all at home at the same time. But I want you to know that when we got through fighting, Daddy would say, okay, boys, come in here. He would wear us out. I mean, wear us out. That wasn't the bad part. No, no, we could take that. But then we had to kiss one another in the mouth. Yeah. And I tell you, I just don't see how queers can do it myself. <laughs> Woo! That was the worst thing I ever had to do. But that kept us from fighting, really. <laughs> so we're going to get together tonight without fighting. Praise God. What are you going to play? We're going to play for you just a little while. We haven't got much longer, but no. That's right. We got it. Don't you think we can do it? I, how many like to see us do it? Let me see. That's not oh, enough. That's not enough, Brother Dog. Okay, that's, that's better, Brother Steve. You say you don't have much longer. What do you mean by that? I mean, you're, you're fixing to push us off this platform. But anyhow. Are you ready, Brother Dog? I'm ready. Are you sure? I'm ready. They're ready. not ready, though. I can tell by look, I can tell by look. How many folks are really ready? Let me see. How many folks really want to see us do it? Let me see. How many folks never saw us do it before? How many want to see it now? Right now? Clap your hands and shout yes. in tune. How do you play it, brother? Let me borrow your guitar. We got to get another guitar here. Bring it over here. Just bring the cord and all we'll plug in right here. We're going to do it. The devil's mad. We're glad we don't want to please him. Because Brother Ward's fixing to preach.
everybody give them a hand clap. I know the secret why I can't play a game. It was 30 years ago. I was uh, about 17 then. I was driving a 1967 Comet two-door hardtop, 289 three-speed with a Hurst shifter in the floor. I'm over your head now. Come on, brother. I know where you at. Didn't have air conditioning because we didn't need it. It wasn't cool to have air conditioning. You roll your windows down the two-door hardtop. Turn the radio up. Pulled a trailer all the way from Dallas, Texas to Los Angeles, California. And I was out there for two or three months in revival meetings as a teenager. I don't know how it happened. Don't ask me. I don't know how it, how it happened then. I don't know how it happened now. But I received an invitation to come over on a Sunday afternoon to preach under the gospel tent. I don't know whose tent it was. All I know it belonged to one of the Hart brothers there in the Los Angeles area. It could have been 50, 100 miles. I don't know where it was, close to Los Angeles. They asked us to come over and they, not the Hart brothers, they were, they didn't even know who I was. It was a Sunday afternoon and, and uh, they were somewhere in another meeting or doing something, but the tent was up. And I remember what an honor it was for me to be able to go over and sing and preach under that tent. One of my first experiences. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I told my wife today, I said, honey, I'm awed. I am humbled, and that's not even the right word. To be able to share in a convention count meeting with men of God who have stood and told the devil we ain't giving up no ground. I have watched the Hart brothers over the years and I told them today somebody had a covenant with God. For as many heart brothers as they are and can still get together on a common stage and when it's announced that they're coming to town, I guarantee you the devil considers leaving the city. But tonight I count it an honor to be able to be in the same count meeting and to stand on the same stage that the anointed men of God God of today are still standing on. Give the heart, brothers, a great big hand of appreciation if you really do appreciate them. My Lord. I told my wife, I said, darling, no, that wasn't when I said darling. That wasn't the conversation I was having when I used that word. I said, honey, that's it. I said, honey, Their daddy or their mama had to have a covenant with God for these kids to still be where they are today. They don't take the credit for it. But today I found out why it was and why it is. I promise you, if I had to kiss one of my brothers, I'd never backslide. I guarantee you. If I had to kiss either one of them, I'd never backslide. I ain't kissing you either, you ugly outfit. He looked at me like, what about, no. <laughs> Amen. How many is glad to be in camp meeting? Well, glory, how many has already been to church? I'm telling you, God's got big plans for you. 
I don't care what the devil tells you, God ain't through with you yet. God has so much invested in you, he ain't going to let you go. You might be able to run, honey, but you can't hide because you're bought with a price. And God ain't throwing you away until you get your job finished. Somebody shout amen. amen. You can't backslide overnight. God doesn't quit on you as quick as the devil told you he did. Somebody says, what if I say poo-poo? If you say poo-poo or pooey, God doesn't kick you out of the kingdom of heaven because you ain't got your job finished. And when you get your job finished, somebody's going to sound the trumpet and they're going to call you home. But until then, you're locked in by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord tonight. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all sit down. Bobby Joe, Chopper, Mayor. <laughs> Honey, come up here. This little lady, you got to understand this. Take your time. If my shoulders are broad, my head is swollen. A moment ago, she took off running when Brother Doyle Hart was up here. She was getting excited there. She took off running down the side aisle. Her blonde hair just a blowing in the wind. You folks thought she was under the anointing. She is. But she is anointed with my grandbaby. Yeah! Glory! Hallelujah! My daughter is pregnant. I don't really give a hoot if you get excited about it or not. You're going to hear about it. I've waited 20 Six years for this. And if you think this is something, you wait till we come back next year and bring it here. We're going to take that baby and put him on the neck of that guitar and say, now let's see three of them play it. And I'll kiss that one. Bobby Joe was a little bit sickly a moment ago. Are you feeling all right? I just got a question I want to ask you tonight. You don't have to lie about it. How many is glad to have Bobby Joe and Chopper in camp meeting this year? Give the Lord the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, you may be seated. Bless your heart. Bobby, sit down, hon. Sit down. Chopper, can you sit down? I want you to meet a young man. You got to listen. This is my home. You adopted me. Dad is behind me. Mama's in glory. My brother, somewhere. I want you to meet one of the newest members of the family of Paxson Revival Center. Wimp Sanderson, is that his name? Wimp. Was a basketball coach for University of Alabama. Came to Arkansas and was coaching a team there. His assistant coach for University of Arkansas, Little Rock or something, looked at my daughter and took a fancy to her. And took the basketball team last year all the way to the championship. And he asked me, he said, can I have your daughter's hand in marriage? I said, not as long as you are a basketball coach. 
I've got 25 years invested in this little girl. The call of God is on her life. If you love her enough to come and go with us, I'm not throwing her away and Wimp Sanderson ain't getting her. <laughs> Little did I know that he was taking care of the Christian athletes and leading people to Jesus Christ every week there at the college. Everybody knows him all over the state of Arkansas. He came to me one day with tears running down his face. He said, I want to marry your daughter, but I want to follow the will of God in my life too. Right now, he's joined the ministry of Rock City Harvest Church in North Little Rock, Arkansas. And I want you to give him a great... He's my new son-in-law, Brother Dennis Swain. Come here, Dennis, and greet the people. Come on, son. Opportunities like this are rare. Say amen. amen. I was here in Jacksonville with Arkansas Little Rock, and we used, we used to come here. We used to beat the University of Jacksonville. And this is my first time in Paxton Revival Center. And I always thought I was having fun on the court, but I was missing all the fun here in December. I was missing the fun, because this is where it was at. This is where it was taking place. This is where the anointing was, not on the court. It's just, where's Brother Dobbs anyway? <laughs> Don't worry about Brother Dobbs. I am just so happy to be here. They've been telling me all week how exciting this was gonna be. And I'll tell you what, their words are true. The Doyle brothers, the Hart, the Hart brothers, the Doyle brothers. <laughs> the Hart brothers were just awesome today. This is my first time meeting them. They are such a blessing. You have stirred me big time. Stirred me big time. And it should have stirred everyone in here tonight. Should have stirred the blessing. Should have stirred the blessing. Everyone is turning the corner. Everyone is turning the corner. Tonight is your miracle. I was praying today and I believe if you've come tonight, you want to hear your word, you want to see your miracle, this is it. Tonight is, tonight is the night. Brother Welton, last night you talked about the children of Israel. They were in Egypt, the land of not enough. The land of not enough. They went to the desert. What was that, the land of just enough? Just getting by. Just getting by. But God had a different plan, did he not? Did God have a different plan? He's got the same plan for you. He's got the same plan for me. We're going to the land of more than enough. We're going to cross the Jordan. Tonight we're going to cross the Jordan. We're going to Canaan. We're not going to be grape tasters out there. We're going to grab the grapes. We're going to grab the bunches and go home. We're going to, oh, I'll I tell you what. I got excited being on the sideline jumping up and down. You might have to take this from me right now. Give him a great big hand. All right. Daddy tells the people in Little Rock, tonight he's not going to holler at them. It's <laughs> about five minutes that lasts, don't it? <laughs> History tells us that when Buddha died, he said, I'm still searching for the truth. But when Jesus died, he hung on a cross and they put him in a grave. But before he died, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't have to search for it because you see, he was the truth. He was the way and he was the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oftentimes in our lives, we try to reason too many things out. We get reasonable in our faith. Brother Welton, people just want to sit there and say, I don't think I can be blessed with a million dollars or a billion dollars. But God wants us to be unreasonable in our faith unreasonable is when you walk to the river and you stretch your rod out over a sea and it parts and you walk across unreasonable is walking up to a blind man and touching him on his face and he gets back his sight too many of us today are trying to be reasonable with what God is giving us we try to de we deal too much with facts we look at the facts of life the facts say that you're in debt the bill comes due and it says right there, the fact is that you owe this much on this credit card. The fact is, is that you will never, ever be prosperous because you got too many bills and you're weak when it comes to credit cards coming in the mail. The fact was that a man by the name of Lazarus was sick and locked up inside an old cold and climbing tomb after he died. His sisters came to Jesus and said, Jesus, come and touch our brother that he may live. Jesus just left him alone and just kept on walking. 
Four days later, he's been dead for four days, and Mary and Martha are mad. Jesus walked to the cold and climbed their tomb. The fact was, was that Lazarus was dead, but truth walked up and said, Arise, Lazarus, come forth. Fact says that you can't make it. Fact says that you can't go across the river, but truth says just stretch your rod out over the sea. Fact says that you can't make it to the other side. Fact says that you'll never be prosperous, but truth says you are more than an overcomer. Fact says he's going to put cancer on your body. But truth says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Somebody shout amen. Too many of us look at the facts. The facts are was that five years, almost five years ago, God, well five years ago, we decided that we were going to go to Little Rock, Arkansas after God had been moving up on our hearts. North Little Rock, Arkansas. We went into North Little Rock, Arkansas and rented a little storefront church that could seat maximum of about 60 people. And that was sometimes stacking them on top of each other. People in that city said, you'll never make it. People in that city said you'll never accomplish an amount to anything. But the main reason why we went to Little Rock, Arkansas, North Little Rock, was to start a television ministry. We got there, started the church on July the 2nd of 1992. The fourth Sunday in August of 1992, our telecast aired for the first time. On Sunday morning at 8 o'clock on the Fox Network there in Arkansas. But the best part about it was, was that the church was running only about 50 or 60 people. Five, almost, four, now we're four and a half years later. We're on two times a week, but our show has moved from 30 minutes now to an hour. Never has there been a week that we have not been on television in Arkansas. Fact says that you can't put a telecast on television unless you've got a big church, unless you've got huge tithe contributors. You cannot do anything unless you've got some man to sit there and say, I'll supply everything you need, just do it my way. But truth says, you get up and do what I called you to do. I will send the help. I will send the finances. I will send everything you need. Fact says you can't make it. Brother Dobbs, they said that fact was you couldn't buy this property. You couldn't build this church. But now 35 years later, truth stands up and said, look what I did. Look what happened. Just let the glory of the Lord rain down. Up. I don't know what you came to this camp meeting for. I don't know if you're where you come from. The facts are is that you're thirsty. The facts are is that you're wanting something from God. The facts are that you can never make anything out of your ministry because they say you've been married before. Facts say you can never be anything because you made a mistake. Facts say that you can never be all that you can be in God's army because you messed up. But truth says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Whatever your answer you're looking for, whatever the problem you're facing, truth says I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man hey! comes under the Father but by me. Just call on him. He'll answer you. Somebody shout amen. Hey, glory. <laughs> well, glory. Shut up, boy. He'll preach, he'll preach all night long if you let him. Chopper, get that thing going over here. Get that song going. You know that one going. You know, what I think about his goodness, what he's done for me. You know that song? Yeah, I mean, that thing would pop him drum. Make him, yeah. Well, when I think about his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think about his goodness and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance all night, all night long. All night Set me free. I wanna dance, 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 dance all night long, 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 all night long. All night long. All night long. All night long. Well, when I think about His goodness and what He's done for me, when I think about His goodness and how He set me free, I wanna jump, 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 jump all night long. Set me free. I wanna run, 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 run
I want to shout, 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 shout all night long, 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 all night long,
blood cleansed. To get that thinking, that reprobate heathenistic doctrine out of you. And now that it's time for you to climb my mountain. When you get to the mountain of God, don't go commanding God. God's got a word for you. I'm telling you, sister, tonight, I'm talking to some lady now, God's got a word for you in this service. That struggle that you're having right now, are you listening to me, daughter? I said that struggling that you're having right now, somebody says it ain't of God. I'm telling you it is God. It's God's mountain. And if you're ever going to get to the place where God can use you in the full measure, you're going to have to stretch on out there and climb God's mountain. Because when you get to the top of God's mountain, you're going to find that God Jehovah is waiting for you. He won't always talk to you in the comfort zone. He won't always talk to you when and where you want him to. Sometimes you gotta move out of your comfort zone into the red zone in order for God to talk to you where you can understand him. You're so, I started to say, pig-headed. You're so sheep-minded. You're so legalistically minded. You got to make sure the sheep get fed and make sure that the father-in-law is pleased with you. I'm here to tell you, God is saying, get up on your feet. It may be a struggle, but make your way up my mountain. And when you get here, I've got a fresh word for you. God told Moses, he made it to the mountain. And in Exodus chapter two, three, or four, one of them, God is speaking to Moses. He says, I've heard the cry of my people. And I've seen their affliction by the reason of their taskmasters. And for a long time there, there was no conversation because conversation is when information traffics in two directions. But it was just God saying, this is what I've called you to do. Moses' number one concern in fulfilling the call of God that was upon his life was not if he was gonna ride in a bus or a gold Cadillac or have to ride a skateboard. Moses' number one concern was not would he wear plaid, a suit, or wranglers. Moses' number one concern was not would he do it in an independent church or a denomination. Moses' number one concern when going down and fulfilling what God had called him to do, his number one concern was but Father, when I get there, they won't believe me. You know good and well you struggle with those same feelings. That when you stand before the people, my God, if they'd just believe me, we could have revival. If they'd just put the trust in what I'm saying, when I prophesy, if they'd just believe it, all of their weights and sins would fall off and we'd have liberty in this church like we had never had before. My God, if the people would just believe the man of God for a change, things would be a whole lot different. Lord, they won't believe me. Lord, they won't believe me when I get there. God said, what you got in your hand? He said, it's a rod. It's just a rod. And God said, throw it down on the ground. Moses threw it down on the ground. When it hit the ground, it turned into a... It turned into a serpent, turned into a snake. Moses jumped back just like you will. 
every time God begins to bring you into the supernatural, fear will always attach itself to your miracle. Every time God begins to move a minister or a lay person into the realm of the supernatural, fear will always attach itself. God said, Moses, reach down and pick it up. Wait a minute, Lord, you're talking about next generation. Reach down, Moses, and pick it up. Moses wasn't a dummy. He grabbed it by its tail. Huh? And it turned back into a, a rod. Everybody say a rod. In verse 4, verse 2, God asked him, said, what is it? He says, it's just a rod. Everybody say, just a rod. 18 verses later, I believe it is, that now then it's referred to as the rod of God. In the same chapter, what was just a rod now becomes God's rod. What was once just something to use to shove sheep around and point and run off bad dogs and bad wolves. What was just common to one man is about to be a miracle working staff that's going to change a people for all of eternity and going to bring you and I into the greatest covenant that has ever been known to mankind. The miracle of the children of Israel began with just a rod. But in just a few moments, what was just a rod became a medium of miracles. What was just a shepherd's staff became an instrument that turned a whole nation What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it was that staff, it was that rod that before was only managing little sheep, now begins to manage a Pharaoh, begins to manage a nation, begins to manage a kingdom. And three million people all are responding now to what? To the rod of God. It was that rod when it touched the river caused the water to turn to blood. It was that rod that had no power until it was placed in the hands of God. That when it touched the earth, lice filled the entire earth. It was that rod that when it waved against the wind, that the locusts feel, the, are you still here? The locusts feel the land. What are you preaching, Brother Ward? I'm saying it was that same rod that when Moses lifted it up and brought it back down, that the waters parted and God's children walked into the promised land. It's not just a rod because Moses took what he had and give it to God. You've had it long enough. It hadn't been producing for you. Now then, take what you got. I'm asking you tonight, what's it in your hand? What you got in your hand tonight? Somebody says, I don't have anything. I beg your pardon. You got more than you ever thought about. All you're thinking of is the natural. But when we take that which is natural and put it into the hands of a supernatural God, God can take it and cause it to be a supernatural thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I preach a little more? I'll preach a little more if you'll turn me back up just a little bit. You keep cranking me down. I listen while everybody else was loud. They hear while I'm loud. (laughs) 
if you aren't careful the devil will convince you that it's what you do not have that is the success of your ministry if you're not careful the devil will cause you to believe that if I just had what they got all my problems would be over with if I just had that man's microphone I'd be as successful the devil's primary job is to show you that what you don't have is the answer to all of your problems he worked that same voodoo on a little lady that was made perfect by the name of Eve it's what you don't have is what you need you better pay attention to me tonight it'll change your life you Pentecostal charismatic German shepherds I got a news for you tonight the devil would have you to focus on something you ain't got and have you to name it faith why is my ministry not what it should be it's because your ministry is based upon what God's going to do for you tomorrow. And he says, behold, today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. When does God want to anoint me? When does God want to use me? Behold, today is the day. Somebody look over somebody and say, it's my time. never ask you for something you ain't already got the only thing God ever asked you for is something that's within your possession right now he never asked you to use faith you don't have he never asked you for one dime you ain't got all faith begins with what I already possess. God takes the present natural things that you have and he gets involved and they become supernatural and they produce supernatural events in our lives. It's hard for me not to raise my voice tonight. Last week, a little lady was on her way to church Wednesday nights a week ago loves the Lord with all of her heart about a mile and a half from our church is an intersection that is dimly lit busy road she was on her way traveling alone and a car came from the opposite direction at a cross street hit her broadside doing about 55, 60 miles an hour threw her completely out of the intersection over into a ditch of water about a foot deep the car that she was driving went on down the road about another 50 to 80 yards and she lay there in the darkness Somebody came along, the Good Samaritan came by and ministered to her. Through her whispering breath, the first thing she said, call my preacher. I'm not talking about 911. I'm not talking about an ambulance. If you want somebody that can get you to the throne room, if you want somebody that can usher you into the emergency, I'm not talking about 30 minutes later, you find somebody that has the supernatural rod of God in their hand with supernatural powers and God will work a miracle for you. The phone call came, service was just starting. I'd walked out to the pulpit. Somebody walked in and gave the announcement. I turned the service over to Chopper. About a mile and a half, a mile and a quarter from the high, from the church. We raced down to where she lay. A woman was holding her. Her arm was twisted out of shape. 
they had her covered with a little shawl. And I began to pet her. Rose, everything is going to be all right. Now in the name of Jesus, you devil, you tried to kill this lady tonight. I bind every effect upon her life in the name of Jesus. And everything that's broken, you put it back where you got it. In Jesus' name, woman, be thou made whole from the top. Of, it works. It works from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, woman. Thou art whole. As they loaded her into the ambulance, those gathered around there, I saw her arm bent. A huge gash about five inches long on her arm. Others that were closer than I saw the broken bone stuck out of her arm. A broadcast engineer, as they were loading her in the ambulance, came back and said, the bone is sticking out of her arm. I looked back and I said, everything is going to be all right. After church that night, I went to the hospital, walked into the ICC, and I said, how are you, Rose? She's laughing. She said, I'm all right. I said, let me see that arm. She said, what about it? I said, that arm that was broken, that arm that had that bone stuck out of it. When they got her to the doctor, I'm talking last Wednesday night as a week ago, the bone was back in its place and there was no fracture. Don't tell me God can't do it. God's looking for somebody who will be a yielded vessel and take the natural and put it in his hands and it becomes supernatural. I'm serving a supernatural God tonight. I wish somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. I'm in overtime now and overdrive. Here it is. A little woman. Elijah met her. A little woman that was on her way to die. She was out gathering sticks. We got people in our church today that are too stinking lazy to gather sticks. The valley has become a career for them. Welfare has become a way of life. Food stamps, you live for the day you stand in line and get food stamps. Honey, I'm telling you, if you want the riches and the fullness of God, you say farewell to welfare. You ain't trusting God. A little woman's out gathering sticks. I'm trying to show you tonight. You got to use what you got. Faith begins with what you have, not what you're going to get. She was out gathering sticks. All she had was just enough meal to make her and her boy a little whole cake, a little piece of cornbread. The man of God said, woman, what are you doing? I'm gathering sticks, going to fix me a meal. He said, go fix me one first. God never asks you, huh? God never asks you for anything you don't have. God always uses what you have. You ain't ever going to win a sweepstakes. Quit lying to the preacher. Some of you folks been lying to God. God, when I win the sweepstakes, I'm going to catch it on my ties. You're a liar to begin with. You're a thief and a robber. Quit bumming off the church. Start paying your ties and you'll be blessed. Quit hitting on people around here. Tell them all your sad luck stories, how bad it is you pay your tithes, you'll get out of that rut. You won't have to be in a welfare line. You won't have to take food stamps. You won't have to shop at Thrift World anymore, thrift stores. You won't have to go down to Salvation Army and Goodwill. God's got good plans, big plans for you. He's a God of more than enough. Don't you shout me down because I'm preaching good. You know it's the truth. Some of you made a career out of hand-me-downs. Welton, if you'll stay with me, buddy, we'll be here a while. She fixed the cake, brought it to the man of God. You know the story. When she took what she had, put it into God's work, God stayed her and her boy throughout the entire famine. And nobody 
they had to die. <laughs> One little widow woman was married to a preacher working in Elisha's ministry and her husband died on her. I'm telling you preachers, don't you leave your wife in a mess. If you're planning on dying, take care of that woman. Because the organization that you're with right now, as soon as you die, they're gonna chuck her out. Are you listening to me? There ain't no room in man's organization for a widow to a former preacher. They want somebody that can play the organ. They want somebody that can play the piano. They want somebody that can organize baby showers. I'm telling you, take care of your bride. Take care of your mama and your mama will take care of you. Amen. The little woman came to Elisha. Go on, go on, wife. Look at your husband and say, I'm going to take care of you tonight. <laughs> Ain't it amazing? Ain't it amazing you go to church and them, them religious spirits go with you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm so sick of religion. Somebody say, give me that old time religion. I don't want the old time that they used to have. I want the kind where women look nice. I want the kind where women look good. Somebody said, don't you know it's a sin to wear makeup? It's a sin for some of you not to have it on. Brother Ward, should a woman wear pants, she should keep her pants on, always. That's what one man said. It's a sin when you pull them off. Now you're set free now. The little woman, Elisha, said, take what you have. What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? What do you already have? God's going, God wants to deal with what you already got. God can give you a miracle. You're looking at me kind of strange, like I fell off a watermelon truck. God wants to take what you got already, right now in your house, already, what you got in your bus. What you've already got, that's what you're gonna release your faith with. Faith is what you have right now. If you're still here, say, I'm still here. I'm wrapping up now. I'm wrapping up now. It's amazing to me what God does with a little woman who had five husbands. Jesus was wanting some water one day, came down to the well, and there was a woman there drawing water. And he said, woman, give me some water. She said, who am I that you should ask me of water? I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew, we don't have anything in common. He said, if you knew, what I, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for the living water. He said, go tell your husband something. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, woman, you had five husbands. And she said it in Paxson, Terminology, he said that the man you're shacking up with right now ain't even your husband. Had five and you're shacking up with one right now. Now I'm telling you what, religious spirits would have hung that woman that day. Religious spirits don't belong in the house of God. But they will come. One old boy sat back in the church in the synagogue in the New Testament and Jesus was up there and he cried out, let us alone. I mean, here's a guy that spoke for the entire crowd and he was demon-possessed. We've got a lot of people today on the boards at churches that are yeah. demon-possessed that are speaking for the whole church. Yeah. Let us alone. Everybody just kind of be, was kind of quiet and said, speak up, buddy. He ain't heard you yet. Some folks don't want to move of God. Some churches don't want to move of the Lord. I told you I was finishing up, but it takes me a while to finish up. Listen to this. He gave that woman living water. She had five husbands, she's shacking up with a man. Right that, that the very moment she, she was living with a man. Don't you find it amazing that when they brought that one woman to Jesus, I'm not talking shacking up, I'm talking shacking. I said, we caught her in the very act. I mean, we caught her in the act. We caught her shacking. Don't worry.
her, honey. You'll get free full of soap with. What, what should we do with her? And Jesus, the final word was, what? Where are your accusers? They're gone. Such compassion and such mercy. You know why some of our ministries are, are, are no bigger than what they are? It's because we're running by the same, same old condemnation our grandpas and grandmas were. I'm gonna tell you tonight that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Come on, honey. God's got good things. I said God's got good things in store for you. I'm wrapping up now. It's amazing to me. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Such compassion, such bowels of mercy for those who were adulterers and adulteresses thieves and robbers and killers. I mean, boy, I mean, he just reached out to all of those people that we say, you can't go to heaven. He just, let me tell you, let me tell you who he has the, the, the greatest judgment for. One had five talents, one had two talents, one had one talent. He took it and hid his Lord's money. And when he hid his Lord's money, the Lord returned. Some of you are grappling because you don't have a lot. God knows what you can handle, what you can take care of. God knows what he can trust you with. That's why you don't have any more because God can't trust you with it. You ain't been faithful. He said, if you're faithful over a little, I'll make you, I'll make you ruler over big and great and mighty things. Don't you point your finger in the face of God. It ain't God's problem, it's your problem. There's a lot of folks who come up here and pat you on the back. I'm telling you the reason you ain't no further along than you are right now. It's all because of you and the way you put your shoes on. You can't blame God. Quit waiting on it. Get out there where the rubber meets the road and start doing the things God's already told you to do, what he's already put in your hands, and you'll see multitudes begin to come in. You'll see a change in your life. You'll see a harvest like you've never known before. Why? It's because God wants somebody he can trust. The one guy that had the one talent took and hid it. When the Lord came back, he said, you take that which he hath. Are you listening to me? He said, you take what he had. And you give it to the one that has a 10. Where's Warren Drake? But I want you to know you ministered to me the other day. He was riding in a, a Lincoln town car with a man that had some money. A woman was in that car with you. Huh? Somebody. The guy that had the rich man. Woman pulled out a purse or bill full and started digging through there. Warren thought he was fixing to get it. When it's all over, she pulled out a $100 bill and gave it to the one who already had money. Now, you listen to me tonight. I'm going to let you in on a secret. It'll work. Don't try to change it. Don't try to become so stinking humble that you're going to miss God. God ain't blessing perfect people anymore. Because there ain't none left. And everybody that claims to be perfect, they're hypocrites. Every last one of us has got problems. Quit looking at me like that, sir. You got as many problems as I got. Here it is. You take what he has and you give it to him that hath. If you want your ministry to be blessed, then you climb God's mountain. You get on top. You start taking your money and you invested in the things of God. You start looking better than you've ever looked before. People will give to those who look prosperous. Are you listening to me? Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank God it's time that we come out of the shadows and let God anoint what he's already put in our hands. You got it in your pocketbook right now. You got it at home right now. Quit holding it back. Turn it loose and let God flow through you. You got what it takes for your next miracle is in your hand right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Would it be all right tonight if we just obey the Lord? There you are. Tonight, when I walked through the door this morning, you was ministering, I saw a treasure. I saw a treasure. It's a beautiful setup. It's beautiful. Ornaments are all over it. It's designed. It's beautiful. It's yours, but it's been locked. 
it's been locked up. You know it's yours. And God says that the top of it is not only going to be unlocked, but the hinges are going to be removed. And the treasure that is already yours, <laughs> hey God, you're going to be able to walk in and get it any time you want it. And when you take it out, he said, I'll replenish it. There will never be lack in that treasure. Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sheila Bahoria Satire. Yanda na maroho koria setele baha satire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I want to sing it. There's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. And if you sin and made a mistake with arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Sing it with me. It is no secret what God can do. What He's done for The word of the Lord comes nigh thee even now. The past is not your boss. The past cannot lord over you anymore. The devil would like to remind you of failures and mistakes. He's good at that. But you're never any more cleaner than you are right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. There it is. Receive it. There it is. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sheila Baholi Katalabah. What is done? I've got to pray for you, darling. All night long, I've been needing to minister to you. He's brought you a mighty long way. You actually know what it is to, to carry the weight of the world on these shoulders, these big shoulders. God says you've carried others' burdens for so long that sometimes it's hard to fly. But the Lord told me to tell you tonight that you're about to take flight. You're about to soar with the eagles. That which has held you back, the Lord says, I'm not going to condemn it. I'm just going to save it. In Jesus' name, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm telling you tonight, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's gonna do it. Turn around and tell somebody. God's gonna do it. 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 Hallelujah. I said God's gonna do it. Woo! Hallelujah. Stand up, honey. Through these hands. 
are coming. Hallelujah. Write it down. <laughs> write it down. Somebody write it down and give it to her. Through these hands are coming a substantial financial blessing. I'm not talking about something that's going to buy you McDonald's. I'm talking about something that will sustain you when the church you go to don't take care of you. I'm talking about going to set you free through these hands in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My God, my God. Don't you play the piano. Are you a musician? Stand to your feet. Hold your hands out. Put them right here. I'm going to touch them in the name of Jesus. Hold them out there. Get ready. Both of them out here. Get ready. Get ready. In the name of Jesus. How? Hallelujah. There it is. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up, honey. Stand up, honey. I wish you was down here. I'd pray for you. You know what it is to have the miracle of life given to you. You've been at death's door. You've been to death's door and back. The devil tried to kill you. He tried to wipe you out. But God says, I've got a work for her to do. In Jesus' name, there it is. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Sing it. One more. What is done for that lady back there. Yeah, wave at me. That's you. Can I pray for you, honey? Yes. You just put your hand on your chest. Come here. Come here. I prayed for you before. Haven't I? Have I ever prayed for you before? Some time ago. Some time ago, I prayed for somebody here at the church. It wasn't you, I don't think. One year we was here and somebody was, the IRS was on your case. You owe $25,000 in taxes. God showed you. Back there in the back. The Where are you? Can do. Are you here? Stand up and shout, I'm here. Praise God. The Lord showed where it was going to be paid in full. The next year we would come back. He run down here with a piece of paper in his hand. He said, you thought you might want to see this. What is impossible with man is possible with God. The Internal Revenue Service sent the man a letter. The amount that was due was over $25,000. But when the IRS sent it to him, it was stamped with their stamp that said paid in full. He never gave them a dime, but God worked the impossible for him. God's about to give you your miracle, sir. God's about to give you your miracle. Hallelujah. God says unto you this night, the relationships that you cried for, the restoration that you wanted, there used to be so many that would come together. There was so much warmth there. God says what the devil's trying to destroy in your past, the good things. God says you're going to have the joy of the Lord and there's going to be a sweetness. There's going to be hugging. There's going to be kissing. There's going to be a love like you've never known before. Thank God. Hallelujah. Well, somebody raise your hands and praise God. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! It's time to get real before God. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, glory, stand to your feet and give the Lord a praise. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a praise. Come on, see that soul.
what is done for others. God spoke to me tonight. Said seven people in this building. Seven men of God in the building. You've been believing God for a miracle. Seven men of God. You're wearing your prize necktie. God said,